Welcome to another lecture of Introduction to Anthropology. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about migration from Haiti to the U.S. and sort of thinking about last the last model we covered where we talk about Bio Halsley's Black Atlantic visions, history, race, and transnationalism in Ghana. In this lecture, we're also going to be talking a little bit about how history ideas about race and transnationalism tie, tie all together. Uh, but in relation to Haitian migration to the U.S., so so to to sort of emphasize this point, right? I want you to think about the way in which ideas about belonging and community go beyond a legal status that is based on on nationality, rather how they expand and include different ideas of what it means to be part of a community even if you don't know every member of that community right you still feel connected it's part of what um, transnationalism in in a way it's what um, some scholars have called imagined communities like every every other nation so the article you read for this model was by Nina Glick Schiller and George Eugene Fouron and this article is is a a, a very um, important um, an anthropological um, text in relation to to migration, right? So first of all, I want you to 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 know a little bit about the the history of of Haiti and the history of migration. Um, we won't get into too much detail. Some of that is in the article. Some of that it's in the in the material, the the documentaries that I've uploaded to to canvas right so you can you can look at that um, and this idea of, of long distance nationalism the transnational concept of a nation the idea of diaspora migration class and nationality and how all of these concepts come together and also how migrants or in this case trans migrants or can influence politics or how they are seen as political not in the country where they are currently living but in the country where they are they are from <clears throat> so can there be such a thing as long distance nationalism right can you can you still um, embrace an idea about uh, a sort of loyalty to a to a nation a nation state when you're not there um, and what's the difference between a country a nation and a state so when we think about Haiti, we first have to sort of really think about this island. Um, this I, I mean, this island that that comprises both Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So they are both th these two countries, these two nation states, are in the same island. This was the first island where um, Cristobal um, Columbus uh, first arrived. Uh, so it has a long history of being occupied, right? First, first by the Spaniards through Colón, and then by the French, and more recently by the United States. And all of these occupations have really decimated Haiti as a nation, right? Because it hasn't allowed Haiti to to grow, even though um, it its history, right, could have been a history of 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 potential of 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 a lot of of wealth right but because of all of these different occupations and the way in which nations even after uh, Haiti became independent continue to intervene in one way or another has really decimated the infrastructure and the, the country so um, I want to talk really briefly like I said about the, the Haiti's um, history right first I want to talk about Jean-Jacques de Saline one of the leaders of Haiti's um, independence in 1804 right de Saline um, was one of the of the founders of what was the first black republic ever to be created right it was the first successful revolution led by slaves and thus the first the first black republic it was really influenced by ideas from the french revolution and the american war of independence but it also challenged them right it took this idea of race of people in haiti being being former slaves being slaves that fought for their freedom and thus it defined being a, a, a someone from haiti as being black right as the sort of um 
unmarked category, while in France and in the US was this idea that you, you have to be white. In Haiti, it, it meant that everyone sort of acknowledged um, this, this legacy of, of blackness and slavery, right? That was right there and in, in the Constitution. Right, um, and this obviously created some issues, right? Because there were still a lot of um, economies that were dependent on slaves. So once Haiti became free and liberated itself um, from the French, um, other places, particularly the U.S., um, started wondering what would this mean for um, slaves in the U.S., right? What ideas would they be getting if they were influenced by, by Haiti? If a Haiti was really allowed to, to, to thrive, um, what ideas, what would that mean for the, 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 the communities of, of, of slaves and former slaves in, in other parts of the, of the world? This, this sort of triumph from the revolution, this this liberty that was won by sacrifice and blood, is it, it it'll become important, right? Because it sort of allows people from Haiti who are migrants to trace a direct line to the revolutionaries that established um, Haiti's independence in 1804. Later on, we have. A couple of important figures, Papa Doc, François Duvalier, who was president from, from 57 to 71, 1957 to 1971. And he used, uh, voodoo symbols, right? He dressed as Bar Baron Samedi, uh, which is a voodoo loa associated with death. Um, and, and, and voodoo here, just for the record, you can, you can read more on, on voodoo if you want to, but voodoo is, uh, a real religion, just like Christianity, just like Catholicism, just like any other religion. It is a religion that is a combination of uh, Christian symbols with with different symbols coming from 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 um, from Africa from Africa, and that really created a new a new a mixture of of, of symbol and, and religious practices. And this is Baron Samedi, one of the main um, deities, one of the main loas um, of Voodoo that's who's associated with that. Because of this, because uh, Papa Doc embraced uh, Voodoo, he, uh, he was rejected by the Vatican Church. Later on, we have um, Jean uh, Bertrand Aristide, who was president, um, you can see, just a few months from February, February 1991 to September 1991 uh, and was ousted by a military coup. So Aristide opposed Papadoc and we'll talk a little bit more about their differences, right? Um, Aristide was ousted um, later on when he um, came back to, to, to Haiti. He was ousted by Operation Uphold Democracy that was um, directed by the U.S. He, he returned to the presidency in 1904-1996 and then later on from 2001 to 2004 and he's currently um, living in, in, in a country that's not Haiti. So as you can see, right, just in this, in this through this short biography, you can see how um, Aristide, the, the president who was elected by the people of Haiti, has been ousted um, several times, uh, and what this would mean to, to, to a country that's already struggling. So when we think about the, 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 the concept of a transnational nation or the transnational concept of a nation, it is important in the case of Haiti to, to, to think about the way in which a lot of people from Haiti see this idea of migrating to the U.S. as a necessary part of their birthright. And this is because of all the interventions that have happened in Haiti. They see this as sort of a rite of passage, right? They, they, they can go there. And, 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 and they have their, their own community there. Like the article is, 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 um, discussing, right? There have been different moments in, in that, in that migration. And here we have a 2000 census tract, um, which is a little bit outdated, where you can see where, um, Haitian communities were beginning to, to form. 
So in Haiti, migration intensified in the 1950s when uh, Papa Doug was sort of in the government, right? But migration sort of happened in two ways, right? And there were different kinds of migrants. First of all, there were middle and upper class Haitians who obtained visas and migrated to, to study, to, to, um, to uh, reside legally in the U.S. And on the other hand, there were working class Haitians who traveled by boat to Florida and later on establish a, a residence there. In the U.S., because of the racial categories that, that, that we use in the U.S., a lot of Haitians uh, were seen as African-American, but because they, they, they were aware of, of, the, of the way in which a lot of African-American people um, are treated, um, in some instances they try to pass as French, especially because they, they, they speak um, Creole, which is a combination of French um, and, and, and different languages. Middle and upper class Haitians were also often had um, a lighter skin color, and, and, and here they use the term mulatto, which it's, I mean, it depends on where you are located, right? But they, these, these people who were middle and upper class and who also had lighter skin, a lighter skin tone, didn't necessarily see themselves as connected to, to the, as connected to other fellow Haitians, although they did see themselves as connected to Haiti as a nation. In the 1950s and 1970s, leaving Haiti was seen um, or was framed by, by Papa Doc as leaving Haiti, as abandoning the family. So migrants really were forced to, to choose between being American or, or remaining Haitian. And there was also this distinction between being a native-born um, Haitian or a foreign-born Haitian, right? You can you can remain Haitian if you're let's say you you have two parents who are from Haiti and you but you're born in the U.S. This is seen as 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 being different from someone who who is born in in Haiti. Later on, when Aristide came into power he was really trying to mobilize the people who were living in the U.S., even calling uh, this community that was dispersed throughout the U.S. and throughout the world as a 10th department. This is following the, the sort of way in which France is divided geographically, geopolitically, right? So in a way, Aristide wanted to, to say uh, or to imply that even though they were dispersed, in a way they, they, they were uh, a part of a territory part of a, 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 a sort of an annex of Haiti. In this sense, for, for our um, the, the diaspora was seen um, as a bank, right? That, that he could sort of rely upon while, um, while for a lot of people there was this sort of familial obligation uh, to sort of return to Haiti and oust Papa Doc, right? Because Papa Doc w had, had a, a, a complicated history of, of, of being a, a, a dictator, right? Of ruling with an iron fist or sort, sort of controlling in ways that were not particularly legal uh, people from Haiti, right? So for Aristide, he wa wanted to sort of see the diaspora as a bank and sort of ask migrants to return to Haiti to, to, to vote and to oust uh, Papa Doc. Later on during this time, because of the way in which Aristide was trying to construct um, this relationship with, with Haitian migrants, it, this is when we start seeing this development of the hyphenated uh, identities, right? Haitian Americans. So no longer uh, a Haitian has to, to, to choose between being Haitian or being American, right? Rather, these sort of hyphenated identities start emerging. And this is something that we see is very common now. And the way in which this was framed is that, right, even if you were born in the U.S., even if you were one generation or two generations from Haiti, from, from, from your, your ancestors who first migrated to the U.S., your blood still remain Haitian, right? And when they say that the blood remain Haitian, this is a direct reference to the revolutionaries who established um, Haiti and who, 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 who established Haiti as a free republic. So one of the ways, I, I mean, what I want you to think about with this, with this uh, lectures on migration and on race is these ideas in which 
people uh, retain, modify, and reinvent their identities even when they are on the move, right? So even if you're moving, you're you're of course drawing from different aspects of your new settings, but at the same time, you're also combining different things. Thank you.